When it comes to financial minimalism, I think it's important to determine your goal. Having a financial goal or fake direction, I think, is super helpful for everybody. Of course, not everything in life is about money. But let's be real, most things in life are highly influenced by money. What you eat, where you live, what you do for a living, who are in your social circle, the way your country is designed and operating, the list goes on. Even the things you're able to do regardless of money are in a way influenced by it. So having a financial goal or path you want for the future can help you decide how you want to live today. When your goal is to travel the world, you probably will make different financial decisions than when your goal is to buy a house or when you want to get out of debt. My financial goal is to pay off our mortgage. Here in the Netherlands, and probably in many other parts of the world, it's very common to have a mortgage. People see it as a normal part of their expenses and not really as debt. If you have a mortgage, but no other debt, you're kind of considered debt-free. People kind of treat it the same as paying rent, but it's really not. I think in almost all cases, it financially makes more sense to work towards buying or owning your home than renting. I know it can be really hard for many people to get a mortgage and buy a home, especially when you're single, and I know it's just not possible for everybody. That's why I think it's really great that alternatives are also getting more common, like living in a tiny home, living off-grid, living in a fan. I think it makes buying and living more sustainably more accessible. I do see my mortgage as debt. As long as my house is not completely paid off, it's not really mine. It's only partly mine. Until then, I'm still relying on banks and interest rates, and I don't like that. And if something goes horribly wrong, you could be on the street. I don't think that's going to happen, but you know, it's something to keep in mind. Having a mortgage is a big responsibility, and I would love to be done with that in the future. It's also a great investment for your retirement. When you don't have monthly expenses for your housing or rent, you can live comfortably with very little money, especially if you're living a simple minimalist life. Traveling the world used to be a big goal of mine. I wanted to travel to Canada, the US and many countries in Europe to see beautiful nature and visit new cities. But when I moved into this house, that completely changed. I realized that for me, I'd rather have a lovely daily and weekly routine where I don't need much instead of working really hard at a job to enjoy a few weeks of holidays abroad every year. Working jobs that I really didn't like, that made me feel miserable, made me realize it's far more important to be happy than to make a lot of money. Having a good foundation in life is so important. I focus on being happy daily instead of relying on fun special occasions. In my experience, this is a lot cheaper and more fulfilling. It takes away a lot of stress, the pressure to work a lot and the pressure for fun activities to actually be fun. When fun experiences are the main goal, it can be a real bummer if it ended up not being that great in the end. I focus on finding joy in the simple small things in life, enjoying the beauty of my daily life. We have a Dutch saying that goes Zuinigheid met vlijt bouwt huizen als kastelen. It means something like Frugality with diligence built houses like castles. I always thought the saying was built houses like air castles, which honestly would have been a lot cooler. I love learning old sayings because they always have a truth to them and we're there to teach people something. Here the lesson is that being frugal over time adds up. What may seem small today has a huge impact in a year or a few years. I thought it was very suitable because we're talking about paying off mortgage. One of the ways in which I'm able to save a lot of money is to try and reduce the items I need. So many unnecessary items are sold is actually insane. There are entire stores filled with stuff we could easily live without. So reducing what you need is a big one. Just a few examples. I don't buy perfume, makeup, I don't buy trinkets for around the house and many many more things I don't need. Examining what you actually need will keep your life minimal and will keep your wallet full. But then of course you are left with the things you do need to buy. We try to make a lot of things we need ourselves. The more self-sustaining we are, 
the less money we need to spend in the store. We try to grow many of our own fruits and vegetables. Food is an obvious expense that we all have. If you don't have a garden, there are still ways you can grow or forage food for almost free. You can always grow herbs or sprouts in your windowsill and maybe even some small plants like strawberries. You can also rent an allotment garden to grow your own food. If that's still too intimidating or too big of a commitment, you can also join a community garden where you can grow your food together with others. You can meet new people and learn new skills from them while growing your own delicious organic food. You can also go foraging for foods. Things like elderberries, blackberries, nettles and all kinds of edible flowers grow abundantly in nature and by the side of the roads. Maybe stroll around your area to see what you can find. In season we eat as many fruits and vegetables fresh as we can, but we also freeze a lot of them to eat in winter. We try to cook from scratch and buy little processed foods. Other things I make to save money are cleaning products and laundry detergent. You can make your own from basic ingredients that are really inexpensive. I just reuse old bottles from cleaning products and haven't bought new ones in years. I use very basic non-toxic personal care and also as a little fun new project I want to try and make my own deodorant soon. Something that's not often spoken about is that sometimes you also have to invest before you can save money. A few examples I invested in are we bought a freezer so we could store our own homegrown food. We bought some fruit trees which still need to grow before we can harvest. We've invested in gardening tools and kitchen tools and we've invested in a fireplace so we can use our central heating less often. But you could also save money with a good water filter or a bike. Financial minimalism covers a lot of areas, maybe even all areas of life so it can feel overwhelming to start. Many of the things I do to save money cost a lot of time. I don't only do these things because they save money. If that was my only motivation, I don't know if I would keep up with it. I do all those things because I think they are fun. I enjoy living simply, living more in harmony with the earth. I feel good about making small changes that are better for me and for all of humanity. Overconsumption causes a lot of exploitation for the planet and the people. Fruits and vegetables sprayed with toxins cause a lot of harm to our ecosystem and our health. Buying less items and using your items longer helps prevent a lot of waste that will be burned or go to landfill. So if this is all overwhelming to you, just start small. Start with something that sounds like fun to you. Maybe start with baking cookies instead of buying them in store. Or just start with emptying all your items before you buy new ones. I can't be the only one who thinks it's extremely satisfying to empty products, right? Whether it's personal hygiene items, pens, notebooks, whatever, I love using them to their full potential. So just pick something to do on the weekend and experience how fun it is. And if you didn't enjoy it, try something else next time. Don't beat yourself up over things you're not perfect at and don't feel like you should be doing so much more because of what you see on social media. When I was sick as a little kid, my mom always said, it'll pass or it'll get worse. And that kind of applies to most things in life. Either it will pass and you'll move on or something grows on you. So in terms of financial minimalism, you will either not like it and it'll pass, you'll move on to something else or it will grow on you and you'll look for new ways to live frugally, save money and expand your skills. And since you're watching this video, I assume the second option is more likely. A frugal lifestyle definitely grew on me. Over time I slowly learned new skills and got used to doing things differently, but I always made changes I enjoyed. I think there's nothing wrong in choosing what you want to do and what you don't want to do. There's always things that could be done differently, but I just like to focus on the things I'm excited to try out and change. I really enjoy following like-minded people on YouTube and Instagram and get inspired by them. They give me new ideas about gardening, tips and tricks for the kitchen, DIY projects and other ways to live more sustainably. I hope this video was enjoyable for you in that way as well.